This is a floor lamp with folding design. It can also be used as a clamp to the tabletop lamp. It's designed for lashes or makeup or you know maybe nail salons. I'm going to be trying to use it for painting at a painting table. Um, comes with a remote. The MSRP on this guy is $150. They sent it to me to review for free, but they haven't paid me for my review, so my opinions remain my own. So in the cardboard box, we have some foam packaging, and there's a lot of metal in here. So there's also this guy. So there's this guy, which folds out to be the rolling stand, which I'm not personally planning on using. We have the table clip, and this is what I am going to be using to clip it to my table. There is a power brick. It is a universal 100 to 240. Output is 24 volts at 1 amp. And we have a remote control and it has brightness plus minus, color plus minus, A, M, and S, which I'll have to read this little card to see what everything does. So if you, well, that's the touch control panel. Here's the remote. Um, so the M is the main light, and the S are the auxiliary lights on the side. So apparently you can control them separately. And there is something in here. It is a heavy metal disc, potentially something that goes in this guy. So here is the main pole. And this pole has kind of what looks like a light stand attachment point here. Um, yeah, it's very much it's a standard kind of light stand attachment point. You got a quarter by 20 screw and then this guy here that you would clamp onto things. And this is the actual main light itself. And so it has a fold out guy here and the light set up there, which has a control panel on the front and then a, quite a decent length of extension here. I think that goes down and I'm not sure all the turning it can do, but it has a decent number of uh, things that move around. Doesn't look like left right too much and except for the base, but all of these will move in and out and then actually this guy, no it does do left right right there. So it looks like it has a decent amount of flexibility. So let me assemble this guy. So you're going to need a pair of scissors to get this guy detached. Once you do, these guys fold in like that. I haven't read the manual here, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and assume that I'm supposed to take this pin out and use this heavy metal base here to kind of hold these things down and add a little bit of weight to the base. So I'm going to use this guy to screw that back in place and tighten it all the way up. Okay, that gives us a rolling base. It has locking casters here, so if you step down on them, they lock and don't want to roll. If you don't, they roll quite nicely. And there is a place here for something like this, for example, to snap into. And then this pole extends up. Okay, this guy rolls around very nicely. Step on those guys and now it doesn't move around anymore. This guy, they say just stick in here. And you have to loosen the screw a little bit to get all the way down. Then you can tighten it in place. So that guy, even when fully extended, holds it out pretty well. If you tap it, you could knock it over, 
but just sitting there, it will hold itself up even if this is fully extended out. Although, you know, it's not super, super stable. Now, if I rotated this so that it was over a leg, I think that would give you a significant more stability there. So when you set this up, if you're using the floor mount, you want this arm to be directly over a leg, in which case you can push it over real far and it'll just kind of bounce back. So, you know, the direction you aim this is definitely going to matter for the stability. And of course, if you make it higher, it's going to be more stable. Now, it's not like super solid, but it's also nice and lightweight and easy to move. So you don't really have to roll this around. You can just pick it up and carry it. But if you undo these three catches, which can be done with your foot, it's a lot easier to lock them than to undo them. But if you undo them, you, know, you can roll this thing around. And it rolls pretty well. So at the lowest setting, this guy is, you know, almost tabletop height here. So I think you could use this for nails and stuff. Just pull it next to a table and you'd have plenty of height adjustability. And when you have it adjusted all the way up, it's probably 5 feet 10 inches. So it's quite high when it goes up pretty high, when it extends all the way. So I'm planning on using it in the table clamp configuration, which means I'm not going to be making use of the entire bottom half of this lamp. So this clamp has rubber there and a plastic cover here to protect your table. There's a pretty good jaw size there, you know, I, you know, you'd have to have a pretty big table for that to not work for you. So my table has kind of a rounded edge and it's deep enough it goes in there and grips it just fine. I really like the um, bar here. It has these giant knobs on it that keeps it from sliding back and forth and those knobs make it kind of easy to pull on. Um, you know, the, it's a very nice action there with those knobs at the end of the bar. All right, so if you don't use the provided floor base and instead you flip it over to the table clamp, if you have it all the way up, it doesn't reach super far out over the table to about here, but it's quite high up. Now, if you pull it down kind of like this, it's much lower down. And I mean, you could swivel it to be almost touching the table if you really wanted it low, you know, but I think, you know, something like that maybe for nails would be fine. Um, but it has a decent amount of adjustability and it kind of exactly right angles. It goes out at a good two feet from the back of the table there. This little rolling floor stand is kind of nice, but since I'm not planning on using it with this light, um, I was kind of hopeful that there'd be a way to buy just the light in a desk configuration as opposed to just having extra parts that you're not making use of. All right, so unplugged, the power supply has a power factor of 1.0 and it's drawing zero watts when it's not actually powering the lamp. Now plugged in with the lamp turned off, there is a parasitic power load here. Um, it has, you know, between 0 watts and 0.3 watts. So I see it jumping up to 0.3 every so often. So it's not a large parasitic load, but, you know, keep in mind that the lamp does draw just a little bit of power. It's probably listening for the remote control. The power supply plugs in right here. And let's just hit the main power button. So I hit the main power button and the main light turned on. These two side lights are still off. I'm going to hit it again and it turns off. Now there is a brightness button and I'm holding it down and it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Now there's also a secondary power button on this side. So when I turn that on, the two side lights turn on. And there's a mode button which is changing color temperatures here. So we have kind of mixed, we have cool and even cooler super cool, and then a very warm. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five different modes of color temperature. Um, and if I tap the brightness levels, it goes up and down. There's one, two, three, four, five different brightness levels. Um, it looks like if I tap and hold, it ramps, so you can kind of adjust where you want it to be. Um, and I can turn on and off 
So here's just the side lights with no top light. Now there is a remote control. I'm going to pull this little piece of plastic out to release the battery. Um, and I can control the top light with that button, the side lights with that button. There is the brightness, which is up and down. Um, so there's the brightness going down. If I just tap the brightness, it goes up a, a, you know, a setting level. If I tap it, it jumps down. If I hold it, it kind of ramps down. So there's also color temperature where you can push the plus button and it will go towards the cool white side. You push the color temperature minus and it goes towards the yellowish warm light side. Um, if you push and hold, it's doing a ramp between the two. I think four or five levels is enough uh, back and forth, but if you want it very precise, you can push and hold and kind of stop where it's where you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to turn this on to full cool white, full brightness, both lights, and right now it is drawing 20 watts, so 19.2 watts. So say it's a 20 watt LED light. Um, if I turn off the side lights, it goes down and now it's drawing about 11 watts. So the side lights are almost as much power consumption as the main light. Uh, let me try just the side lights by themselves here. So just the side lights right there are drawing about 8 watts, 7.9 to 8 watts. If I turn on the main light, this thing goes up to 19 watts. So there doesn't seem to be a way to turn this thing on or off with one push. Um, you just have to adjust both sets of lights independently. So you can't just hit one button to turn the whole thing off. So if I mount it on the right side of my four foot painting table here, it gets just about, but not quite to the center. Um, also, if I want to go higher, it slides off that way. But if you had a three foot table, you know, side mounting would be just perfect. Now mounting to the back of the table does mean I need to pull the table out about an inch and a half more than I had it before. So here's the light mounted center back. And when it's mounted center back, the light is right about here if I have it kind of up like this. Now if I want it lower, it also moves forward. So now it's, you know, right about here, which is okay, but it's a little farther forward than I'd like. So if I want to push it back, I can go lower and up, but this guy won't allow me to tilt down. Um, so it's kind of shifting out a little bit. So if you're okay with it being up high, you can go back quite far, like so. But notice that the in-out is not really adjustable or it's related to the height. So I don't think the lack of adjustability in out with the height is going to matter to me much because where I want it at this height, it is plenty bright for me there. So one thing I haven't made explicitly clear so far is that these guys rotate quite far. So you can actually shine light straight up. And if you don't want to do that, you can turn those off um, and you can go in all the way down to kind of 90 degrees. So if I wanted to, I could fold this guy pretty far down out of the way like that. I don't think I'll be doing that, but I could. I have noticed it's difficult to grab and move this guy without accidentally hitting one of these buttons and adjusting the color temperature or the brightness. Um, I think with a little practice I'd get better at that, but this is such a, a spot that you want to grab that you're always touching those buttons while you're moving it and repositioning it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this guy. It's going to be my new painting light.